um, to do that. Uh, if we didn't, you know, that wasn't a requirement of the re license renewal process. It was. I mean, the process is slightly different, given that, you know, with the with the Comcast process, we had this long, extended period of ascertainment where, you know, we could essentially take any number of routes to develop some information about Comcast, and one of those things was um, uh, to, to visit their facilities. With the licensing process, for the initial license, you know, they don't have an ascertainment element there. You know, the, the process is started by uh, either the issuing authority or the company. In this case, Verizon um, sought to initiate it. Uh, they issued their Form 100, and then we had 90 days to um, draft a um, uh, this document here. Um, but it, it didn't, you know, it didn't go through a kind of the level of information gathering that's, for whatever reason, that, that is laid out in um, the, the renewal process. But you know whether we want to do that at, at some point. I, I can't imagine they would have any major problem with that. Uh, so, it, it, what I can do is put something in there along the lines of what I've just read that would require them, uh, or you know, we can put it in a, such a way that they would have to respond that they are prepared to commit uh, to stick with the existing statutes governing. Uh, cable licensing. Uh, that seems to make sense and it, it clarifies the fact that not only do we want to understand what it is they're doing, but we want them to abide by the existing laws. Is, is that... Uh, that sounds good. All right. Yes. Services to be provided. The issuing authorities determine the following services. Um, Cable system, 78 video channels downstream, four video channels upstream. That's what we have now. Um, uh, residents uh, have to be hooked up if they're within 200 feet of the existing aerial plant. Again, that's what we have now. Um, town can receive public educational government uh, this access. This is because of the uh, level playing field yeah. requirements, right? Yeah. Is there anything in here about uh, providing high definition? There's a there is one thing um, about digital. There is a thing about digital. Yeah, uh, we we, we asked them about uh, how J. Yeah. Will all channels be digital format? But but digital doesn't have to be high definition, does it? No. Um, I mean, it, yeah, we didn't ask specifically, it's specifically um, about their high plans for high definition. Is, is that is that within our purview? I mean, uh, to um, set any kind of request for you know percentage of channels that are high definition, or does that fall into? But it's not programming per se. I think it's an industry. The industries, all TVs are going to be high def anyways. The industry is going to be driven by the industry anyhow, by the technology. The demand. So, so cable television by by uh, law would have to, if, if you know, the law goes into effect, you know, over the air broadcasts all have to be high definition by a certain date. Would cable have to match that by that same date? Uh, well, I mean, it's, isn't it the the TVs? Yeah, the TVs have to be capable of airing high definition pictures, right? I think that's the require that's one requirement. Uh, yeah, I don't know Well there have to be, you know, it wouldn't make any sense to require the TVs to receive right. high definition if they weren't signal if the stations it. weren't required right. to broadcast it. Yeah. So I, I guess no. I don't know whether that's that's getting too deep into the technology part of it. But I remember when Are we, we confusing digital with high definition? Because you could, have, two, a, you could have a very low res digital. Sure, sure. Right, right. I'm, I'm talking high yeah. definition. Yeah. I mean, this thing that says digital here doesn't address the yeah. question. I mean, if you're going to, 
if you're going to specify or, or ask about digital format, I mean, I think a more pertinent question is high definition format. Yeah. And that that's, from what I remember of our visit to the head end, that also has a lot of economic implications to Comcast because um, what they said, going from, I guess, analog to digital, they can get uh, is it 10 times as much. You oh, know? yeah, way more but channels. But going... When they go uh, from analog to high definition, they can only get two times. They can only fit two channels in that same slot instead of ten. So, um, for every high definition channel they have, uh, they've, they've got um, you know, fewer, but less bandwidth. But I, I, yeah, I would I would think there should be a question in here, uh, Jeff, about high definition. Okay. Explain your intentions with respect to uh, providing high definition TV. Mm. Any questions in here about um, uh, interactive TV? Uh, no. Scratch and sniff. <laughs> well, you may be voting by television by the end of yeah. the next ten years. Very true. That what the internet is for? Right. I'm being asked to vote for things all the time over the It'll eventually just be one, one medium. Yeah, something to be said for redoing all the laws that govern this thing. Yeah. <laughs> there certainly is. I mean, I don't know what the right, I don't know what the right balance is, but it's a confused mess. It, you don't know if it's better to put more specific definition or less specific. Less specific definition, you know, because yeah. do you say industry standard or complying with current technology? Just one page that says, will you provide TV? But you can, you can, you can ask what the current state of uh, technology is now. You know, things like high definition is known. There is some interactive TV, which is basically pay-per-view. If you want to buy this movie now, yes, uh, yeah. Yeah. click the button and right. do it twice. So that's interactive. Um, I don't know. Is there any question in here about uh, pay-per-view channels versus uh, just regular uh, channels? Or does that get into the issue of programming? Um. Well, I guess we can ask about what their plans are. Uh, I think that's probably uh, maybe separate from you know telling them that we want this, mm -hmm. this, and this. Describe plans for providing interactive uh, and uh, and a review once you know what they're. Are, they may not want to tell because it's a you know the competing right. against the yeah. Comcast in terms of you know uh, their ratio of pay per view and then the like. But right. Well, then the RFP to Comcast there's the whole section on interactive services. You're right. Explain to the side of the RFP says explain Comcast plans for offering additional interactive services to subscribers. <coughs> Are these interactive services video, audio, data, explain? Um, Are they going to be offering cable subscribers? Which one? Which question? I'm talking about, I'm sorry. Well, look at the RFP that was issued to Comcast, page 20. It's the other. Yeah. Technologies discussed below, but then there's nothing discussed below. Am I missing a page? Where, where, where are you reading now? Uh, oh, yeah. Page 20, uh, oh, yeah. 18, new what? technologies. All right, so it says the town is interested in the impact of new technologies. Yeah. And, and then it to says... this end, Comcast must submit a statement on its policies and plans to upgrade the cable system to accommodate the new technologies that are discussed below. Yeah. And then, and then it goes right to 19, and there's nothing yeah. discussed below. Uh, yeah. 
You follow that, Jeff? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's somewhere in the rest I, of the. I think yeah. it got 40 pages. I, I don't know. I'm gonna. Bet, I'm gonna bet somebody left it out. Somebody's database somewhere it just didn't get inserted. Yeah, I see that. Check that out. Well, back to the issue of uh, interactive um, programming. Is it the desire to just take the uh, questions out of the RFP and put them into the uh, the other, other document or I think so. Yeah, a lot of it is sort of cut and pasted, but some of it is different. All right. Yeah, it's a, it's not identical. Should there be something in here about, you know, uh, new technologies that we we don't currently anticipate, uh, you know, that they would just give us some notice of it? So say, for example, 3D TV sets come out of the lab and, and people start, not, and they have, they have them right now. You don't need to wear glasses either. Um, but they're basically, the signal that goes to those TVs is different from what you see now. Uh, but yeah, I'm just, you know, thinking. I don't know if this lever hit the market, but you know, technologies like that that might come up that we're not aware of now. Should there be some kind of provision in here um, that they would give us some kind of advance notice of, of that kind of thing? So, say for uh, example, say for example, somebody's got a certain kind of. Well, they, they say, gee, it's time for us to go out and get a new TV. So. I'm going to go out and I spend a lot of money on a, on a new screen. And then six months later, without them knowing it, uh, you know, Verizon or Comcast introduces some new feature um, that Comcast or Verizon knew was coming, and, but it requires a different kind of TV. If the guy had waited, you know, five months or so, he could have bought mm. that anticipating. It's kind of like with the high definition now. You know, people know it's coming. You buy an old TV, you know, you know it's going to be obsolete. But yeah, but they haven't time. been. They, they know about that, but they there's not been any requirement for cable providers to tell people that. We had some discussion with the right? broadcast representative, right? That said, you know, to the extent they even they have some you know technology in the works that said if they switch over their whole signals and start making. Some TVs obsolete. You can always have a, you know, end of the end of the wire converter that would take the the signal from Comcast and put it, you know, on the other side, put out a signal the TV could receive right? for for that particular technology. Yeah. But yeah. if it happens to be a, a different technology, there might not be a uh, resolution to it by putting an end. Mm. You know, right. resolve or 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 just I'm just it, thinking. You know, like the top this, this is gonna be yeah. a ten you year. Know. Yeah. Mm. yeah, a 10 year uh, contract and that was one of my concerns at the very beginning it's like you know come on you don't know what's going to happen to you now, but mm. maybe there should be something in here about the anticipation of uh, new technology and some kind of uh, advance notice yeah. uh, changes to so the for the benefit of you know so affects so consumers yeah. so called emerging technologies right? yeah so the uh the requirement that we would put in here then is to um, will uh, essentially will uh, Verizon commit to providing notice to the town of some some advance notice of, of some period of time. You've got to determine what what's reasonable. Well, yeah. I mean, how do we know that? Well, I mean, 
six months, <laughs> pick a you know a, a time period. You know, I, I think you know certainly uh, <laughs> something less than that would probably be too short of of a notice. Uh, you could negotiate what a reasonable time would be. Like for example, you know, TiVo's and, and those kinds of uh, recording systems weren't necessarily anticipated, uh, especially the ones that skip through commercials and things. Uh, six, seven, eight years ago. Will Verizon provide the town with advance with reasonable um, advance notice of uh, six of uh, six months? Six months advance notice of changes Minimum. of changes in technology um, that will affect um, subscriber uh, televisions, I guess, right? You're saying like every six months they'll send a report saying here's what we no no not every six yeah. months but let's say say for example someone says oh at Comcast or Verizon we're going to start sending out uh, you know uh, three dimensional TV or, or personalized program or some whatever it's okay, going to be so, yeah. six months or more before they do it um, especially if it's going to have an impact on the uh, the end consumer, where their equipment is not likely to be uh, maximized, no. with that well, form usually it goes the other way. Yeah, the FCC, I mean, the FCC, with respect to this digital conversion, gave some kind of you know, their first regulation was like ten or twelve year advance notice that that digital service may obsolete your current TV, and then they've been extending that deadline for for years now. I mean, they originally this whole conversion to digital format was supposed to be completed in like 2000 or something, right? But, but like, I don't know what the current deadline is now, 2008 or... But, but here's an example, for example, uh, a new subscriber to Comcast cable TV uh, may have the option when they get their setup of getting uh, perhaps a free TiVo equivalent Whereas somebody who's an existing subscriber um, would have to pay extra to get that, unless sure. they go out and buy their own and, and then try to hook it into the, the system. And depending on how you know complicated they, they're set up at home, you know, with you know multiple TVs or whatever, it, it gets a little more complicated. But that's just an example that uh, you know you can't always anticipate way in advance, but for, you know, for something like that, they know what they're going to do. I mean, I'm not asking them to give away their competitive uh, strategy so that, you know, Verizon can immediately match it, uh, but just trying to protect the people at home who, uh, you know, might make these purchases of new equipment and then get, get stuck, you know, with a Betamax. Uh, okay, so will will Verizon provide the town with uh, a minimum of six months notice of changes in technology that will affect the subscribers' viewing in their and their equipment in their uh, uh, I guess in their equipment or something like that affect their television equipment? I don't know if they'll even be calling it television in ten years. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when do we know? Uh, on page seven, there's a reference here to the audio leveling, which clearly was an identified issue during the, the ascertainment for Comcast. We're looking for them to describe uh, the process they use to minimize audio fluctuations. And then also the pixelization, we want to uh, get them to address how that is handled. <coughs> yeah, 
uh, on this page eight, this whole issue of uh, the INET, you're basically asking them to install something that's already existing. So that, that's, oh, okay. yep. you know, page eight, number four there, cable two. I read that differently. Uh, um, just in terms of um, a point to point asking to install a point to point fiber optic INET would but be a definite advantage to what's already in place. But you wouldn't you wouldn't want to duplicate what you've currently got unless there's a an overwhelming reason to do it. There really is though. There really is an overwhelming so, so you're so you're saying from a technical standpoint that the existing INET that basically was was paid for in the previous contract mm -hmm. is obsolete. Uh, it's uh, it will be close to definitely. It will definitely will be by five years from now. Um, the the current system, the way the way it goes, the the capacity of the current system, um, the way that it works is it can be a little finicky and. Um, the speed at which the data is transmitting is um, it's, it's almost close to capacity now and that's without when you start thinking about kids in all the classrooms like and that's only with like say teacher computers and, and, and computers for the for the personnel and like the town hall and that kind of thing but you know, are you talking about now is the INET strictly cable TV or is it it's internet Basically, uh, it's basically yeah, an inter a ne internet network. It's a network infrastructure for a wide area network transmission between okay. public buildings. So, so even even though it's not a cable TV, they're still required to provide the town this INET service. Hmm. Well, they're not re well, they're required to because it was negotiated into the and license. The yeah. and, they, and the town chooses to use it primarily for data transmission. Yeah, correct. And, yeah, and it saves it saves the town, the you know police, fire, everybody else as well as the schools, money. Now we would have to sure if they didn't pay for it, we'd have to take it out of the town budget to put it in there because right. it's a necessity, right? Right. Yeah, we, we'd have to have some mechanism to create a wide area network. So whether it's yeah, yeah. It would have to come out so now you so now then you've got the issue. Uh, who, who pays for it, what do they pay, and who maintains it? You've got two people. I, I maintain it. <laughs> well, um, you know, uh, they should, you know, do something. Know, yeah. Provide hardware or they, they provide repairs. Or repairs. That kind of thing. Software upgrade. And no. No. Well, no. The, the, their responsibility is to make sure that the lines are Transmitting. Transmitting, right? Yeah. yeah, so if there's a, you know, someone knocks a telephone pole over, or there's a nice storm. Right. Well, a, uh, s signal strength um, would be them. Like right now, if, if my levels are too high going in and out of modems, um, or I'm getting too much noise in the line, they would come out and test it. Um, if it would happen to be equipment that was on my side, then I would have to call, or I would fix it, or I would have to call in a special specialist contractor to come in and adjust or reprogram the equipment. And I just wanted to add one other thing on that INET is right now we're, we're building a, um, um, a security camera network to piggyback on that as well. Yeah. It's a separate thing. Um, and that all of those, that essentially video transmission, but as digital data goes, we'll be going back to the I mean, then again, you go, you're getting into our own video being being transmitted as streaming video, um, as digital streaming video back to um, the public safety building. Mm -hmm. So we are, I wanted to just clarify that we are using it sort of as a television, as video, as well as data transmission, but the video is data transmission. So you get, you've got an issue here is, um, you know, does one company build it and another one maintain it? Does one company build it and maintain it? And, it and what is it what's the charge sure. to the other company? And I don't think it's realistic to expect, you know, 
Comcast, you don't want two different people because they're going to get this if something goes wrong. You know? Sure. It's his fault, it's his fault. Or if somebody builds it and then the other person has to maintain no, it, you're not going to get that either. They wouldn't be able to do anything. Yeah. This, this is the Verizon area. Oh, this is the Comcast. Yeah. No, you don't want to do that. <laughs> but, but then... But, but then you're going to have you're going to have an issue where how do you put a, a you know a fair value on that so that the other party has to match you know the dollar value of that that INET service. Hmm. So if you if you choose to go with Verizon um, because the technology is better at this point in time and uh, you're going to be stuck with it for the next ten years instead of five. I'd rather be stuck with their current technology for 10 years than the Comcast current technology. Yeah. Or yeah. they, they just pay, but so they just pay us and then what we what, build and own it, well, they pay us. Well, so the, 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 the problem, you know, naturally, whoever's paying, uh, whoever's doing the work to do the installation and the, the troubleshooting or whatever is going to cover themselves conservatively and say, well, this is the value of what we're providing you. So Comcast, you know, you, you have to come up with, you know, a half a million dollars or whatever it, it's going to cost. And naturally Comcast will say, well, that's, we can do it for half that, you know. Their ability to provide us a wide area network, I think, as opposed to a Comcast cable wide area network, will be far cheaper, I, I think, for them. I just Down see it. I just see it as, uh, you know, a, an issue that's going to have to be resolved somehow. I don't know that this that's issuing good. report here is, mm. is uh, appropriate for the situation because you don't want two kinds. Well, you know, right, but I think we want to reserve yeah, actually, the right. A good point here, though, was: does level playing field mean total amount of dollars out of pocket, or does it mean what I was heard Neil saying is maybe it's a performance-based kind of thing where you know you, you Comcast has, have an obligation to provide us with a certain level of performance however you do it and Verizon would have in theory maybe the, the same obligation to provide the same level of performance at the end of the day maybe Verizon, Verizon's technology allows them to provide that level of performance for a fraction of mm. the cost that it costs others but you know what's level well, and then you get into questions, you know, it would argue uh, our quality is better than their quality. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, our service is better than their service. Uh, and it gets it's pretty complicated. I'm not sure we can resolve that tonight, but yeah. well, I, I don't do think we are. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, let's just There's fly through be, this and then we'll... Again, well, there, there are communities nationwide that have two and three or however many different companies, and somehow they figure out a way to... Sure. And have everyone I, I think the so. uh, the key, or one of the key points here, um, is point K. In the event the issuing authority and the applicant cannot agree on the exact parameters of an INET in the town, the issuing authority hereby reserves the right to negotiate alter alternate equivalent services or financial assistance of comparable value to the INET with the applicant. So I think the intention was to, even though. There are issues, as you noted, Wayne. Uh, we wanted to keep our options open um, and not simply and, and just not fail to raise the whole INET issue. So, K, I think, basically says um, we'll, we'll give us some latitude, I guess. Did we put anything in here for webcams? Um, no. For example, if you wanted a webcam on the roller skating area down by the oh, traffic that's essentially school. what we were doing with the security cameras. Okay, yes. I was thinking, when you say security, I was thinking more in terms of water supply, the water pumping stations. Uh, this is something we discussed mm -hmm. a year, year and a half ago, for you know, terrorism, that kind of thing. Um, They're planning on do, doing that on our current network, you know, the town is anyway. Yeah, on some of the facility buildings. So, so your your definition of security would include like areas where kids might congregate, and you know, after school, anywhere the town feels it's necessary and wants to pay for the installation of a security camera, 
to run it over the wide area network. I mean, they have the ability to do that. Can they, can they, the town would do this on their own dime? Town would have to do it on their own dime from the standpoint of they would have to, they would have to provide the camera and the cabling to go from the camera to say a, a monitor to monitor that and then and then a relay from that point to stream the digital video from that point through the network through the uh, through the in the local area network infrastructure within that building to equipment that they would pay for it that would go on to the infrastructure provided by that vendor okay. Verizon or Comcast Can that would go back to say the public building and then on that end as well can't we put that in part of the request I mean why why make the taxpayers pay for it if we can ask for it well that may be part of the six hundred thousand that you know whatever that number is well, uh, the six hundred thousand is for WCTV for the for the for the station running the station well I mean the, the, the six hundred thousand you know we've, we've included six hundred thousand requests in 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 the Comcast uh, RFP, and we were also looking for six hundred thousand in the. Um, you know, some of that money may not go to con uh, to WCTV. Yeah. Maybe we use it for a purpose like that. I, you yeah. know, I, I go back to my original point. You you start with the zero base budget. You say this is what I need to run the station, and that that number that you you came out with was what at that time was based on what uh, you thought it would be paid for all by Comcast. And, and you know, it's now you got two people that are going to split it. It's going to be three hundred thousand. Uh, what I'm saying here is, while we're on the subject of the INET, and you're talking about an upgrade anyway, um, I think this is the time to you know put something in there for webcams, um, which uh, you know if they would go along with it, fine. If not, then we'd have to pay for that too. But that would be a separate line item from the operating budget. Of, I, I wouldn't lump the, the, the security into the WCTV programming. No, I'm, I'm simply but saying, Wayne, that that first of all, Comcast is not going to give us six hundred thousand, and and uh, Verizon isn't going to give us six hundred thousand. But you know, I think it's the town. The intent was, uh, or my belief, anyways, is. That um, clearly WCTV um, has a very important mission, and they need to be uh, assisted to the extent we can. But we we now have two vendors, and rather than summarily shooting all that money over to WCTV, the town should consider whether we do that or whether we take some of that money, whether it's three hundred thousand from. Um, you know, 300,000 from Verizon or 600, whatever the number is we ultimately agree on, and say, okay, um, WCTV, instead of getting 100% of that money, which you've historically received from Comcast, we're going to peel off some of that to use for municipal purposes. But I guess what I'm saying is I'd rather not do that. I'd rather say, okay, here's the money for WCTV. And here's the money for the security and the webcams. Don't take from the station money uh, that you want it, like the typical politicians will do. You know, we'll, we'll pass this law, we're going to build a bridge, or we're not going to build a bridge. We're going to, you know, take the money away, so we'll spend it on something else. Now, I like, I like the budgeting of this money's for this purpose, this money's for that purpose. If there's an additional need in the town for something like this, that's, you know, I mean, the total amount of money we, we get is going to be what we get. Mm. I'm just saying, don't don't put it into you know the, the WCTV budget and then and then peel it off for something else because you know I I, I, I what think you're suggesting is to, to to give WCTV a lump sum of money that they can use at their discretion, but earmark the money that the town wants to use, which you know is okay but i think it's a little inconsistent you know no, no, you know no 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 i'm saying give wctv its money that it asked for for its budget and secondarily as part of this inet i mean the the cost of this inet is going to be expensive 
mm-hmm. you know, this this new thing. I'm just saying that um, put put the uh, request for these webcams or whatever else that you know the town would be paying for as part of you know you've got two vendors that can split mm-hmm. that cost now instead of. One. Well, the, the webcam, if we're going to now do that with Comcast, we're going to have to add that to the amendments, and, you know. Mm. Well, you no, know, you don't, you know, you know, well, I would almost, um, I would almost approach it from a, a, a technical standpoint where, um, to make sure that the, the in, as opposed to a financial, the, um, the pipe they provide, like the fiber optic line that they provide, not be fractional that it be able to you know if if, if they're going to give us a small fraction of their of their pipe and provide us equipment on camera equipment on one end it just go for the big pipe and then we'll provide the end points okay. Do you know what i'm saying no what what, what? i'm saying I, I guess i'm what i'm saying is is the biggest thing as far as those cameras and are concerned okay those kind of things is really the pipe and not the equipment on the end okay so really the, the big and the cost probably would be to have that availability of, of, of u- utilization of that fiber optic well what I'm I guess what I'm saying as far as just the inet is concerned is why ask for 80 percent of the cost yeah. and settle for 60. When you should ask for a hundred percent instead of for eight, and then come back. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean you're because you're, ta- totally you're talking agree. ten years sure. here. I mean they're they're going right. to have card blanche for ten years. Um, I I don't see a problem asking for it at this point. Uh, if they don't want to give it to us, then okay. it's just a you know a, a bargaining point. And to a certain extent, you know this could be. An area where Comcast and Verizon compete with each other. You know, they may want one may want to say, "I provided the INET," or one might say, "I, I don't want that. I'll just give you some money." Yeah. Then we could say, "Well, fine. We like Verizon's technology better than yours anyway." They may not yeah. like that. But um, I don't think it hurts to ask for it, Jeff. Or do you think it does in terms of the Comcast? Because we haven't asked for it yet from Comcast. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, at this point, uh, I don't know. You know, whatever. Um, we can certainly ask for it. I guess that you know, worst case scenario is they just say no. Um, I, I really, I, I don't know. But w- what is it that we're we're asking for specifically? What is it we need to put in here? From a technical standpoint. Yeah, yeah I need to revise this so that we can get this done. You you wanted you said what we weren't planning on getting was the actual webcams, the actual the security cameras, area, yeah, right? Okay. The cable, you know the how, much, how many of those there are? That would be the thing to do, like they did with the cable drops. Would be to provide a certain number of points. Did you want to make a, a guess at what that would be, just so we can uh, put something in? Geez, I don't know if I can make a guess because I know there's several points on different schools where they really want to monitor. But they, would a dozen be enough? Um, well, they'll have nine now, eight now, and they'll probably want another four, five, four in the high school. Okay. So in total in all the buildings and all the, the entire so 20? district, like 50, I would say. Oh, that many? 30 to 40, probably all the points that they'd want to monitor in town. Because okay. we'll have 10 now, and that's just a fraction of what we want to do. Okay. All right, so, so within the... Uh, cable television system in uh, institutional network section we're asking for um, better ask 50 webcams do you, do you want to ask for more and settle for less later I say 75 and, and settle for 50 yeah, could, I suppose well but do you, you need know, 75 we 50 drops capable of what? being uh, outfitted with webcams. Well, yeah, but then you've eliminated the cost of the webcam. We want the webcams too, if we can get them. Mm. So, okay, say 50 webcams with drops. And uh, if we have to pay for more of them, you know, we can. But Any relay equipment too? Any so 
associated uh, relay equipment. Data or it's more than data, isn't it? Well, it's essentially signal. Signal. What's a better word? For, uh, I'm sorry. What uh, 50 webcam uh, web cameras with drops and associated relay equipment? Is that what it is we're seeking here? Yeah. I mean, it probably would be similar to what you would need at your locations to transfer mm -hmm. digitally if you were to do that. Um, do you know of other towns in the area that are doing something similar right now? I mean, I know Tuxbury is doing it. Um, I, I think they only have. I think there's something going on in Lowell. I'm not sure. I'd have to check for it. Now those webcams aren't operable with a joystick from a central location like they have at the BC football game. They're, so they, they're not. They do. <laughs> in. That would be nice. They right now what they have is just the, the, the a box to open the door when they see somebody through the camera, which is a separate thing. The sky cam. They they actually have a you know these cams that they can. That's how they do their security at the at the football games. You mm. you know you don't see as many uniformed policemen around all the time, but every square inch of that stadium is being panned by a security camera. They can zoom in and, right. you know, capture your image. They can do Well, that's what this will be. This is what we're setting up right now. We're going to have a digital video recorder at the public safety building, um, and it'll be monitored at night, yeah. just all the school buildings. It'll stream and it'll take, you know, it'll record images and everything playback. Okay. Um, all right, so we'll, we'll put that in somewhere within the, um, within this section four of the cable TV system line it. Uh, Packet access channels, uh, again, we're seeking the three channels with the prospect or possibility of <coughs> adding a fourth one if a demonstrated need exists. Access fee is um, five percent. Again, uh, the reference here is being made to cable-related uh, access slash cable-related annual funding. I think um, where we're now talking about two providers, uh, two cable providers, each potentially being required to provide uh, five percent of the gross revenue. The thought was um, that the Board of Selectmen should have some say in determining whether um, Verizon's 5% goes exclusively to um, WCTV or whether 4.5% of it goes to WCTV and 0.5% of it goes to the town for cable related purposes or uh, that's that was that's the way that's written. Um, if you want to modify that to have it go exclusively to WCTV, then we should amend this. Yeah, because um, as we mentioned before, that it's likely that the number of cable subscribers will remain pretty much the same, even if they're divided between two service providers. Yeah, mm -hmm. because if you had just one and you had been getting 5% from that and another one comes in, takes away a market share, but the total number don't go up and possibly the dollar value goes down right. because of the bundling of services and, and that kind of thing, mm -hmm. you'd actually have less money. Mm -hmm. um, and if the town is getting the benefit of an improved dinet with uh, webcams and, and other things like that without having to spend any money. Well, that, that 
may be the case or may not be the case. I mean, we, we may wind up in a situation where um, Verizon says, <clears throat> we're not going to do that. Yeah. We're not going to provide that. So I guess if, you know, if there's a whole, any number of scenarios that could unfold, but one scenario might be that um, we have to make a judgment at some point that we either get 5% or we get some lesser percentage and the webcams. So, or you may not get the webcams or the five percent. Mm, right. You know, that's the any more, that's the more <laughs> likely scenario. Get those scenario. fiber connections, though. <laughs> but um, you know, certainly, if, if the board of selectmen, you know, they can do what they want. Um, as far as you know, they could take all of your money if they wanted to, couldn't they? Yeah. Okay. But you've got, you know, you're going to have to move out of this facility sometime within the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, Much sooner than that. that's going to be expensive. Um, and your operating costs are going to go up because right. you've got this almost free, right? We pay utilities and things like that. Yeah, right? yeah. But, uh, but again, you know, that's their, that's their prerogative, right, Jeff? Uh, yeah, but I mean, they're going to be looking for recommendations. So, I mean, as a practical matter, um, I would expect that you know, the document will be uh, provided to them, um, in, you know, essentially at a necessity at this point. Uh, we need to get a, a vote to authorize the issuance of the document. So, uh, again, I'll highlight these items. Um, but I'm hoping we don't get a significant amount of debate, quite honestly, because um, you know I don't want to have to rewrite this document next week. Yeah. Debate among who? Us or no? Amongst the uh, board, um, uh, you know, certainly, uh, obviously, questions and so on. But to the extent the document has to be changed significantly uh, at the board level, that's going to really. Put uh, put a time crunch on getting this out um, to meet the deadline. Yeah. So, uh, you know, if it's the the sense that we ought to make it exclusively um, five percent uh, going exclusively to WCTV, um, okay, we can do that. You know, the, certainly uh, it is a valid point that the universe is not going to expand to any large degree. Um, it's going to be a matter of the two companies sharing 65, 6,600 customers. So, um, and and I think you should also make the point that the dollar um, percentage for just cable is is possibly going to go down because of the bundling. Um, because we are not going to get any income from telephone or internet. Right. Well, the bundling and presumably. What Verizon will tell us is that they're going to come in and compete and drive down prices. So to the extent that you know re the revenue just from the cable service goes down because now Comcast has to lower its price to compete with Verizon. Well, they're effectively doing that by yeah. bundling, you know. Uh, yeah. Right. Well, and and so you know, I mean, that, well, it depends on the apportion of the discount. But yeah. 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 But uh, the other the other point is too to be consistent, Jeff. I mean, if, if all the money that we're supposed to, all the money we get from this contract is supposed to go to cable related services, if you allow the board of selectmen to peel off whatever, there's no guarantee you know, that whatever money they take out of this is going to go to cable. I mean, it could wind up going anywhere. Well, no. I mean, it has to. We we can't. Uh, the, the town can't take money legally um, for from from this source and use it for general fund. general fund purposes you know it has to be if we're going to use money from the cable contract it has to be um, for cable related services now I, I don't have the, the full definition of what that means but it clearly can't be used for buying DPW vehicles or police cruisers or um, you know things like that. The definition right now is cable related services, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, could I ask Jeff, on, as we were talking about um, on page nine, um, item K, 
if we were in, in talking about the two different service providers, wouldn't you think that um, whoever is providing or maintaining or repairing whatever um, existing INET services, um, it would be one of the two providers that the financial assistance then that was provided, uh, that was um, negotiated from the other provider would go toward what you're talking about here, um, the um, surveillance type of equipment or anything like that. It's all would be related to what you are using and planning to use on the um, town's INET system. Uh, yeah, it could. I guess the I think the my thought was to to maintain maximum flexibility, um, and you know maybe as we go forward, this is kind of an outline of of kind of uh, it's a it's a framework of what we're seeking. But I didn't I, I was concerned that if if that goes south and we don't get anything out of the INET, for example. Um, or some of these other provisions uh, just are not acceptable to Verizon. Um, the concern I had was that we don't wind up in a situation where the only funding that is available is is specifically earmarked to uh, WCTV when the town also has communication or cable related needs. Um, but uh, well, I, I could tell you right out, I'm, I would not vote in favor to take a dime out of the, this budget to give to, you know, anyone other than WCTV uh, to spend uh, because a dime today becomes a dollar tomorrow, becomes five dollars, you know, five, ten years down the pike. You know, I've seen it happen before and, um, you know, you provide politicians with a source of revenue and they, they spend it and they spend more of it. Um, I think providing the town with the free intranet service, uh, I mean that's that's a lot of money and, uh, uh, and, I and that, that that is as you said before a sunk cost so the 194,000 that was the new one the new one though but I mean right. to replace all of that with the, the new uh, fiber system is going to be in today's dollars, a lot more mm. than than that. Right, but not a lot for them, really. But you have Probably. to look at the value yeah. for it. If you well, were if you were going yeah. out and purchasing it, yeah. oh sure, you'd, you'd, you'd be really spending expensive half price. a million dollars, for sure, or maybe more. And if if you want to have public safety, you know, uh, webcams, um, that's that's part of the you know public safety budget in a way. I'm not saying that we should uh, take from the police. Uh, budget, but um, if we get it as part of this, I mean that's a benefit to the town. It's a right. related thing. And I think it is video. Yeah, yeah. We should we should push for that. But you know, if if Donna has done like a zero based budget uh, and come up with this six hundred thousand dollar figure, I mean that's what she needs to run the station uh, based on you know uh, a ten year period. I mean, you know. Like, the way it's budgeted now, after the first five years, you, you may not have any money at all to buy new equipment. So, I, I myself wouldn't vote. I wouldn't open the door to, you know, allow that. On the other hand, you know, the selectmen can just do what they want. <laughs> if they do, it just amounts to really another tax on the on the taxpayers of Wilmington. Okay, the, um, well, uh, is it the pleasure of the committee then to just remove cable related and we will um, remove cable related on uh, B, uh, applicants shall provide PEG access uh, funding to the access corporation, to the access corporation. Uh, as directed uh, Are you the Access Corporation? Yes. That's what we <laughs> In the amount of 5%. Is this wording different from the previous contract? Um, previous, you mean the current oh, license? I can't remember if this is, yeah. 
the current license. Boy, it's getting cold in here. Yeah. Someone turn on the air yeah, conditioner. Before. The air conditioner? Yeah, a little bit. It was just I'm freezing. <laughs> Jeff, do you mind if I take a little break no, here? No, no, keep you awake. Yeah. Some things. Otherwise, I'm going to go. We don't want anyone going to bed. It's 10 o'clock. We're sleeping. You know, this meeting. <laughs> Thank you, Don. You're earning your salary tonight, Jeff. I'll tell you that. <laughs> and then some. You're earning yours too? Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> you get what you pay for. Yeah. <laughs> it says the town's not getting value out of this committee. That's right. Yeah, well, ultimately, who knows what's going to happen. You just come back and say, no. No. <laughs> We were up for three yeah. hours. Yeah, I think um, was like, you know, <clears throat> the situation with two of them and everything else, I think we just got to issue something and negotiate in good faith and yeah. try and work this stuff out. Mm -hmm. Preserve flexibilities, but some of you know some of these points you, you discuss and you try to anticipate what you can. And then, as long as we're giving a horizon is substantially similar to what we just issued to Comcast. I mean, when we first started this process, I mean, the likelihood of our perception of the likelihood of uh, you know Verizon doing this was wasn't really on the table. The uh, language in the RFP to Comcast um, uh, reads Section 7.2 of the 1997 Renewal License requires Comcast to pay the town, you know, the Access Corporation five percent of the gross annual revenues because of the definition of gross annual revenues included as Section 1.124 in the existing cable license. Uh, is intended to be as comprehensive as permitted by law or regulation. The town is seeking to include all revenue attributable to the Wilmington system in the calculation of 5% payment that are not specifically excluded by state or federal law or regulation. To that end, Comcast shall continue to provide funding to the Access Corporation for PEG Access programming in the amount of 5% of its gross annual uh, revenues as to find less applicable license fees to the town and the Commonwealth. Such funding shall be paid to the Access Corporation on a quarterly basis with the exact payment schedule of such annual funding to be made a part of the renewal license granted to Comcast. That last sentence was not part of this. Uh, no, it's not. You know, it stops at quarterly basis. Yeah, I don't think we reference quarterly in this. Uh, you, you referenced it there and we reference it here, uh, but you don't continue on with uh, no, it does, yeah. the rest of the wordage that was uh, after quarterly basis. All right, so would the, um, is it the desire of the committee to have it mirror what was in the RFP? I vote on that. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So and, mirror. And that would just, but that would leave it just right so that it's both the issuing authority and or access corporation. Well, no, it doesn't in the... Uh, when you just read it, I thought you said that it was both. No. I don't think I referenced issuing authority in the... The language that in the RFP and this okay. IAR it says issuing authority and or access corporation. So you want to make it just access corporation? Yeah. That what was your your question? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like from the tenor of the discussion, the desire is to earmark the money specifically to the access corporation. Um, and not give, not uh, suggest that the issuing authority have discretion on that point. So, I guess ultimately, it sounds like what the interest is to take the language from the RFP and put that into the um, IAR. All right. Unless anybody objects, I'll do that. No objection on my part. <laughs> That's fine. Okay, then the next point, uh, I presume the similar would follow that we would change this to a PEG access facilities funding, remove cable related equipment. The applicant shall provide funding and um, remove to the issuing authority funding uh, 
to the Access Corporation as directed by, well, what do we say here? The annual operating funding discussed about Comcast shall provide funds for the purchase of PEG Access equipment and facilities totaling 600000 I guess we could probably just take the same language from the RFP. Yeah. All right, so uh, 600000 Access cable casting. I don't think there's any should be any issue there. Okay. That's just outlining. Um, they're going to tell us how uh, the programming would be originated. We have the uh, senior discount, uh, senior citizens discount requests. Um, customer service provisions, uh, customer service office, which is similar to what we're asking for in the RFP. Uh, telephone answering. Yeah. So that, we're not going through all this stuff. I mean, is this, is this substantially similar to what we've been asking? Yeah, it's, it's substantially what, what, what similar. What Comcast is currently doing in their current license and what we're asking them to continue doing in the RFP? Yes. Okay. Is there anything you can Yeah. Could have pasted. Any yeah. significantly yeah. different? I don't have the patience to go through, frankly, you know, term by term with respect to telephone answer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, if we've already done the Yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, I don't know that it's basically the same. say that it's uh, verbatim, but it's certainly okay. essentially the same. Yeah. Um, Whatever's different, put it in there. And uh, here's here's a, a D on page 12. It kind of uh, covers the point uh, more or less we made earlier about changes in technology. It says, you know, the applicant shall communicate with its subscribers in the town regarding, among other things, equipment policies, policy changes, new programming services, advanced notification of free previews, et cetera. I mean, that would also, that would, if you added in something more specific about the, the technology changes, that might be a, an appropriate place to uh, Okay, and you would want it at, at least six months in advance. Yeah, the, uh, right, right. Of any such change, basically, I should throw that right. It might be the place to insert it. Though. Okay, you can check it here. programming but to, to provide local area like news um, I'm not sure how I want to phrase it but I know like nationwide radio stations have been turning to like a nationwide format where there's no DJs at the station anymore they just basically take a, a national station and then boom shove that out on that once they buy a station they just basically close it and then rebroadcast what their national right. thing is and I, I mean it, it wouldn't be I mean I guess it wouldn't be very good for their business their, their being a business to uh, not provide local you know area news or that kind of thing but I suppose do community antenna television systems have um, must carry obligations like the satellite systems do? 
Is yeah, uh, yeah. The um, Comcast does have must carry requirements. I, I don't know specifically what channels they are, but there are. They do have those obligations, and I think that's. I've, I know I've had com uh, complaints in the past about certain channels, and then I inquire about it, and I'm told that you know those are must carry requirements. It's Manchester or whatever some local channels. So there, there are requirements for okay. for Comcast, and I would presume that since Verizon would be operating under the same requirements uh, for their cable service, that they would also have must carry obligations. Um, I don't know if we asked that anywhere, here, but uh, or asked them to outline what their must carry obligations are. Sure, should maybe we should do that. Except for Fox News. Uh, explain must carry obligations. Yeah. Um, didn't we discuss in the past um, that um, something about if the service provider does do? particular surveys, customer surveys, that they would provide information to the, um, to the town? Um. Yeah, there, there's, uh, is that because we wanted to see if we could um, insert some questions that we wanted them to ask as well for us? Yeah. And I think it was programming and um, customer service. Actually, you know, we, we talked, um, Wayne, before, and I um, apologize for not bringing this up before, but uh, you had asked about <coughs> questions related to interactive programming. It is covered here under the programming section. Okay. Uh, describe pay-per-view programming that will be carried. Describe any interactive program that will be carried. Describe foreign language programming that will be carried. Um, what page? Describe page any page automated page. programming that will be carried. That's page 13. Okay, I'm a, I'm a bit ahead of you then. I, uh, I did uh, add some language in here about surveys. Uh, I where it is. I see on page 12 the communications with subscribers in the town where you um, mention the surveys, but I think it it mentions the inquiries they might make, but it doesn't say it doesn't um, mention providing any information about those surveys. Reading now. Well, uh, I saw at the bottom of page 12, it would be item. Um, if surveys are not conducted by Verizon, mm -hmm. it's not process. It's covered in the interactive team. Again, on page 13, item E, under programming, um, <laughs> there's, uh, you know, um, questions about the surveys, but um, what about providing any of the information to the town about the results of the town's carpet Okay, I guess item I addresses that under programming, but I didn't see it under communications with. Now, now legally they don't have to tell us anything about programming do they? Well, um, programming and price are basically I mean the, the, the comments we got from Comcast was that you know this is not something that's covered by law under our contract you don't you know, right. have I mean, no they, comment on it period. Uh, yeah I think um, it would, it's my understanding that the real issue is that we we legally do not have any authority to uh, direct them to provide any uh, you know specific 
um, programming or we don't have any authority, the, the Board of Selectmen doesn't have any authority to um, require them to set certain pricing. I don't think it's, um, it, it's not illegal, though, to engage in discussions about those things. It's just that we, or the Board, doesn't have any statutory authority to um, require it. Require it. Yeah. In fact, it's prohibited from requiring it. But. Yeah. That's, that's what I thought. Um, so uh, I guess just going back to this other point for a minute, with regard to surveys, uh, Donna, you're suggesting that we need to put something more in about requesting in, uh, survey information? I, I, I believe we talked about that at a previous meeting, and we talked about a time frame, too. Um, I don't know if um, it's a programming issue or not, but they should, we should ask them to discuss their their sort of the, the um, channel and program blocking functions that they offer for you know, parental controls. Oh, I saw that. Is that in here? Yeah, something's in here. Okay, it's in here. Yeah, there is a. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I saw the parental control issue. Yeah, it's some way to block the channel. The blocking, yeah, it's in there. Okay, it's in here. That's good. Yeah, here is the on page seven. Okay. Yeah, I jumped ahead here, Jeff. Uh, on page sixteen. Yep. Uh, license fees. Okay, well, but before we get to that, though, can I just get some clarity on what it is we're looking for with regard to survey um, changes to the, to the survey piece? Uh, surveys are referenced under communications with subscribers, and it's referenced under programming. So under programming, the town hereby requests the applicant provide the town with copies of all such surveys. So that seems to address it with respect to programming. Um, Except that I, um, you just might want to consider if you're going to ask them within a time frame of some sort to um, receive the um, copies, or it's rather open. I think. So we have to provide the town with copies of all such surveys within. Um, 30 days after completion? Is that too short? Um, well, I guess I'm, now that I'm looking at this, maybe it should say surveys, uh, survey results is what we're really looking for yes. within 30 days. Um, completion survey. Yeah. Survey results. In 30 days. Okay. So is that, uh, does that address that one? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we're on, is it six, page 16? Yeah. Um, license fees, I had forgotten about this. Um, if you've got <coughs> 6,500 subscribers or even 7,000 in Wilmington, you're talking about you know, $3,500 a year at 50 cents per prescriber. Right. Subscriber. Um, going to the town, this is the town here, which um, I would interpret to be the Board of Selectmen, but it would have to be, again, used for some cable-related service, right? Um, I don't think that does specifically. That, that, that's a license fee. Um, as far as I know, it comes in as a miscellaneous revenue and just, you know, Okay, I mean, so I don't... I don't object to, you know, 
three thousand five hundred dollars a year but can this fifty cents be changed during the course of the ten years no that's a statutory requirement i mean that that's a statutory limit it says per year or <coughs> such higher amount as may be allowed by applicable law but that hasn't changed in twenty years so uh, but it's never as long as i've been involved and it's always been fifty cents they should give it to you for doing all this work. Well, like, that has to come, you know, someone's got to pay for his time, right? Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's yeah, pretty much the standard Christmas uh, bonus. Okay, so, I don't know what they do with all that money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 3500 And again, we're still we're still going on the basis of thinking that both Verizon and Comcast are going to get the ten-year um, contract. I know we've gone all the way around on this. You know, Peter seemed to feel strongly that it was in our interest to go with the longer contract. Last time he talked to all of us, at least that was my recollection, which which was counter to what my initial intuition was telling me. Uh, yeah, well, I think part of it was on the basis that, you know, the, the, the strong likelihood that um, that the federal laws may change. And, you know, again, to the extent that, um, I, I guess, assuming that whatever terms are met um, are grandfathered, so to speak, it's better to have 10 years, you know, uh, assuming that in a year or two this whole process becomes, um, uh, is eliminated, you know, rather than to have it only five years and then be put into the um, open arena without, you know, where, where these national licenses are granted or whatever. I guess I think that was part of his reasoning. Um, and the other was clearly with the extent of the demands that we're seeking here, um, uh, you know, we're not going to get a five-year license um, and, and 300,000 in equipment grants and 5% of revenue and all that stuff. Yeah. That, you know, one one of the things that you know goes back to the beginning that uh, you know I felt pretty strongly about, and I was frankly disappointed we weren't able to do anything about it, was that uh, there was no money budgeted in any of this to allow for an audit of the accounts, which we were entitled to do by our uh, from our previous contract. And if you recall, you know even Peter's uh, discussions mm -hmm. where Comcast, you know in lieu of having somebody go in and look over the books to check them, uh, just gave up tens of thousands of dollars to yeah. the town just to right. yeah, just avoid it. And uh, my, recollec my recollection was one of the reasons, we, well, the reason we didn't do it here was we, the town didn't want to pay the money for the accountant to do the audit. Right. And uh, frankly, we, we might have recouped a lot more money than it what it cost us to audit it. So I'd like to have, I don't know, um, I, I guess one of the feelings was that since most of that would accrue to the benefit of WCTV, the town didn't want to pay for the audit. So have you budgeted in your $600,000 or whatever it is, a, a more than adequate fee to have sort of uh, even annual auditing? I mean, annual might overdo it, but, mm -hmm. but at least, um, if you, if you had it budgeted in there that, um, you know, just that, you know, threat of knowing that you can come in at any time and audit it and you have the money to do it. Yeah, to be honest with you, I haven't budgeted that in. Could you, could you please put some in there? Because I, I, you know, one of, this whole process, um, when I first started it, uh, I thought maybe we had some more leverage than we really do. And this is mm -hmm. before the hanky panky started down in Washington D.C. But um, you know, I, I thought the leverage of you know granting only maybe a year or two years or three years instead of ten 
right off the bat would be some leverage. I thought having the ability to audit the books was some leverage. Um, and there were a few other areas, but uh, frankly, uh, we don't seem to have a lot of leverage here. Um, yeah, it's certainly pretty uh, pretty limited, it would seem. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, 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 it seems like a an awful lot of time and effort um, for very little uh, opportunity to influence the, the process. You know? yeah. but, but then, you know, ultimately the, the leverage is the customers. Um, you know, if, if there's competition and they don't like the service, I mean, you know, dish networks, satellite TVs have still offered I think, you know, good service, you've got that, you've got Verizon now, and now you've got Comcast. So, so maybe competition will make a difference. And bringing these issues up for public discussion, making them broadcast, I think doing it for WCTV is a service too to the uh, community, but it uh, would be nice to have more, you know, uh, leverage in, in the process. But yeah, anyway, I think it's uh, probably going to go the other way. Well, at any rate, uh, I, I think the ability to, to audit the books will always be something that we would have anyway. And I don't know if we need to have uh, that language or request in this as we have in the past. Maybe we do. Well, it's more of a, a thing for you because, you know, they pay the money, but not exactly how we spend it. But we do have language in here about auditing the books, right? Because it was in the original uh, contract. Um, it, well, it's, yeah, this isn't the contract. This is the uh, request, uh, the invitation for um, or issuing authority report. I don't, I don't know that we specifically in this uh, state that we uh, want language to audit there. We have, uh, that we're going to put language or seeking to put language in the license to audit their books. Yeah, I, I would I would use the uh, same language that was in the uh, original contract that we saw. Yeah, yeah it's actually um, in this section, uh, page 51 of the 13. Uh, on this, this one here? Yeah, the actual um, renewal license portion, just the second section of the page 51. Okay, that would be... So where, where did you say the auditing was here? Um, well, it says here, reports, audits, and performance tests, but I think it's the next page. We don't actually need to put that in, in this though, right? Just uh, in the, uh, yeah, in the license, whether we want to make reference to it in here, I guess we could put a reference in here that the yeah, I'm, town I'm, is seeking to have the ability yeah, to audit it. I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't be uh, satisfied with just their own audit um, and sworn statements by their selected people uh, because that we've already got, and that's when somebody else asked to audit their books that they they paid right. up. Um, I would ask to go in the minutes, though, that, uh, that there be a note here that uh, made a formal request that Donna put in her budget sufficient funds for auditing, you know, on an annual basis if necessary. Um, anyone want to take a vote on that? Or is, is there a second? Um, yeah, I don't know if you want to say annually, but... Well, um, the, the funds are there. It's for annual if you want to. You don't have to do it every year if you don't feel it's necessary, but uh, that the funds will be there. We don't run into the same problem we did here. So we have a second on that? Yeah, I'll second. Okay. Take a vote. So, let me, let me, so uh, the, the Donna, to put sufficient money in in the WCTV budget annually to audit uh, Verizon. Well, right? not just Verizon, but you know, 
Verizon right, okay, and or Comcast. Right. So it's unspent in any one year, could roll into the next year's budget. Right. Mm. Right. So you just have a little bit of a kitty. So an auditor could be hired in the event one is deemed necessary. And I know some access corporations have chosen to do that and some haven't. Mm -hmm. Some have, as Peter suggested, an option was initially writing a letter. And, um, sure. Yeah, you can, right, you can. And it, if they want to send you money and avoid the audit, that's mm -hmm. that's fine. But uh, that's without the ability to audit, or then you don't have even that that option. And when they when they do that, if you just you have to wonder like, well, what? We <laughs> what would you? Yeah. Yeah. What would you find if we really audit? Yeah, Especially when when they do it twice to the same town. Yeah. 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 So, but at any rate, um, and. So, so we have a, a second on that motion. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, so the motion is uh, Donna to put uh, sufficient money in the WCTV budget annually to audit Verizon or Comcast, so that the audit, so that an auditor could be hired, can be hired as necessary. Okay. That's the motion. It's been seconded. Can we take a vote on that. All in favor? Uh, All right. Unanimous. Okay. okay. Hmm. Thank you. Can we just discuss the final license term? Um, so, okay, so we'll also put language in there about being able to put audit horizon and stuff. Okay. Only one extra thing I wanted to show you that I thought of that was that currently uh, Comcast provides each school building with an internet connection, mm -hmm. which is be separate from the INET. And a block of five IP addresses, static IP addresses for each facility. And what about the high school? There's been some talk about building a new high school. Uh, is there a provision in here for for that as far as drops go? Yeah, isn't there? Do we is get a chance to somewhere? specify additional drops? We had a certain minimum number of drops, and then additional drops to be. We had fifty, but that was for.